Welcome back to Base Camp, WNC. Well, as usual, I got one project already started before I started to film, but basically I've had a couple people ask me about this thing and send me some emails. So I'm finally getting caught up. Nice, cloudy, overcast day today. I ain't got to deal with bright sun in the camera and shadows. So I figured I'd get down here. Uh, this is well cistern. The spring head, of course, is pulling up the side of the mountain. It actually runs into two other cisterns that's been here since the 60s, and we're covering them in the spring water project. But it runs in on the other side of this tank. This is the outflow. This right here is a 275-gallon tote, and it's been painted black around the corners for algae make sure algae can't grow in it and then it's been wrapped up and we're going to do that in the video my little pump house on top of it right here this one's actually built out of uh ripped down two by fours to match the styrofoam that's inside i'll show you inside and the pump i try to make these things just as critter proof as possible i mean this has been here two years we live just below 4,000 feet and hasn't froze anything else. We have two vents. There's one vent right here on the top end to get the heat out. One on the other side over there to let the cold air in. They're plugged up right now because it's still winter, even though I think we're past the freezing part of it. And uh, let me show you the inside and what it all looks like. Well, here's the inside of it. Like I said, we built it out of two by fours. This hardboard polystyrene was two and a half inches thick and just to save weight with moving it, I ripped them down. These are full size two by fours for my great big roof rafters. But we just cut it close enough to fit and any big gaps in there, we just tried to go around every one of the gaps and just cut it all about a half inch short and just fill it up with spray foam and that way it sealed it up tight. This cistern right here, this pump pumps up to the one up by the house. So we have to pump the water twice. But uh, this thing right here is run by one little old simple 110 line. And in here, if I can get in here, I do have a light on it right there so I can see at night. I do have heat cables plugged in right now. And the pump. But this thing right here, of course, is the suction line. And the way I've got it done is I actually got it going down through this lid. Let me pull this lid up for you. Okay, can't pull it up a whole lot. But what I've done, I've come out of the top lid of the tote to a two inch piece of PVC pipe. And then this fits on down in here. This is actually just a piece of an old wire spool. And to keep critters out and everything else, what I have here, that little rubber gasket that I have on the bottom and top is actually what goes around the toilet bowl tank. Had a bunch of them left over. And then of course, this is the suction line for the pump with just a little bit of gap because one, I don't want ants or critters to get in there, and two, it has to be able to let air out when it fills, and it's gotta be able to suck air when it pumps water out, so you can't have it completely tight, but you don't want critters in there, and of course, generous use of heat cables around here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you building that tank on this one, and we're gonna go up the hill and take a look at it and get it going. Well, here's the start of it, and as I said, I got in last night, and I went ahead and um, started washing it and cleaning it. And then I got out this morning and I started painting it. And I figured, well, I gotta film this thing first. But of course, all these 275 gallon totes are just this opaque white. They're only made to be used temporary. They're not made to be permanent. The good thing about this is here in Western North Carolina, we have a man that sells these things. I mean, it's M&M steel drums in Canton um he's a certified recycler but this thing you have to know what was in it because it has the food grade stamp on it and the number two plastic and everything else but this one actually came had molasses in it 
and it still had a little bit of molasses in it when I got it. And I washed and scrubbed last night, and then I just let it soak with hot water and dawn all night long, and finally got the rest of it that dried up in the bottom out. And they're only $65 used. Now, he does have them. You buy it. You get the old coat inside. He puts a brand new liner in it, and they're like 140 bucks an hour. But uh, it's important you know where it came from, what was in it. Buying them off Craigslist or something like that, and the guy had them clean. Because I can buy this whole thing at the farm center for $10. And it had herbicide in it and pesticide and insecticides and you don't know what. But it still has the food grade little thing in there and they show that to you. But you really got to know what was in it. So it, this is 275 gallon and costs $65. If you get a regular water tank from, you can get them anywhere from Tractor Supply or get them online. Pretty much up to a thousand gallon, it's going to cost you about a dollar a gallon. If you can get them through like tractor supply or a farm center and they have them food grade and you can pick it up, that's a good deal because shipping on these things can cost you almost as much as the tank does. So a regular commercial tank will be close to a thousand dollars and this is $65. So that's the whole meaning of this channel is homestead prepping, sustainability on a budget. So know where they come from. What I did last night, it has two metal bars on the top. I remove them and just take the liner out. And it's a whole lot easier to paint than the, with it being in the cage. So we're going to do that and we're going to get going on it. And I'm going to show you, take you along for the ride. Well, I took a sheet of this vinyl roofing that I have. And you could use like the heavy black landscape fabric that comes in pretty big sheets. You could use pieces of silk fence. Um, even the black paint on the tote is going to fade after a while. Of course, this is roofing, so it's guaranteed for 30, 40 years. So there's plenty of UV protection. That's what you're after. I've seen channels, um, take the totes and wrap them in black plastic. And everybody knows in black plastic in three, four years, it all cracks and falls apart. So... Depending on how much money you want to put in this thing, try to find something that lasts a long time. They've got some black metal uh, underlayment for metal roofs that have got to be good for heat. If it goes underneath the metal roof, you can get rolls of that and put a couple layers on it. So let me slide this tote down in there. Well, here's what I've done inside. I slid up about six inches on the corners so it can lay down and cover everything and the only thing of course totes gonna fit up against that side so we'll get no sunlight i did cut this out kind of like a flap doors this is where the two ends overlaid to try to keep it to where um sunlight don't get there and that's where the valve is to shut it on and off well there it is i finally got the tote down in there pushing this stuff out and it is smooth all the way around Kind of like putting your pants on. You had to kind of go a little bit at a time. Trying to keep the liner. Keeping this material on the outside. As you can see. Right here at the top of the tank. And now we're going to fold these pieces in. Kind of like wrapping up a Christmas present. Well here it is. Wrapped up. Put the bars back on top. Bolted them in. And all that does is. When this thing is full, it just keeps this metal frame from spreading out wide. I tuck the flaps up so you can see the valve. Just got them tucked up underneath that bar. But they'll come back down to hide that valve so any sunshine that comes into it. And uh, I got the dog house or the pump house made that fits on top of it. I'll get this thing over on the other side. And we need to cut a rather large hole in the floor to accommodate the lid. I'll show you how to make the fittings if I got all the parts to go from the pump house into the tank. Well, I had to jump back a little bit more to get it all in the screen. But this is actually the tank all wrapped up. And it is sitting on the pump house that I've got built. And the valves here. And even though this thing looks kind of huge, you got to remember it's going to be buried in the dirt 
to about here. And we'll have a pit going down to this valve, a uh, box and whatnot. But uh, probably still have to bend over to get in it. But this thing here is four foot deep and about five and a half foot wide. And the build series on this is because it will have a 220 pump to supply everything, what I'm planning on doing all this year. And on the other side, we're going to have a solar driven piston pump in there. And we'll be putting DC direct solar on this whole thing. The uh, 110 pump will be able to run off of solar when the sun's shining. And uh, we're going to take it along for that bill. But as usual, this thing's running a little bit long. So what I need to do is get y'all to get me up to a thousand subscribers so I can make a longer video and a little bit more view time. So even if you're not interested, watch the whole video anyhow. Ha! I'm just kidding. Like it, share it, tell your friends about it. But if I can ever help you out, this is what Carolina Homestead Planner does. I've got a couple appointments this week to go see about building some cabins and doing some stuff my, my word my name's getting out a little bit more here up and down what i call the i-26 corridor but i got a vehicle and as long as we buy fuel we'll travel and go uh, this virus thing ain't gonna last forever so yeah this is being filmed right about time this whole virus nonsense and all that's going on but like i said like it share it subscribe tell your friends about it I thank you.